Dan, great. Thank you for that insight. I'm going to transition now to the focus more on the material uh, and the different types of marking methods that ought to be considered for mill standard 130. And, uh, you know, really, I mean, if you were to open up the mill standard 130, I'll make a comment, you see dozens of different marking uh, methods. That doesn't mean they're all the right marking method or there are even modern day marking methods. Right. Um, so we want to focus in on what's the most practical marking method and materials we can use here. So uh, take us down this path. Okay, so starting out, uh, assuming you have all compliant data, the next thing to consider obviously is the type of material to use. And this is very important because with MIL Standard 130 compliance, we're talking about placing a label on an asset that needs to be on there for the life of that asset, as well as the 2D data matrix barcode that's created based on your data. That barcode also has to be readable or scannable for the life of that asset as well. So to determine the proper material and marking method, what needs to be considered is what type of environmental condition that these assets and the labels are going to be exposed to. So, for example, if we take a look at this slide right here, and we start at the bottom left, and we look at the polyester material, and you see a wear and tear uh, rating of low, uh, the print method is thermal transfer, typically this is used for just about anything that's going to be an inside protected area, such as an office, let's say you're marking uh, laptops or electronic equipment, or even in a, a warehouse environment, uh, as long as it's within doors, you're not worrying about anything such as exposure to the sun. Mm -hmm. UV rays could do some, really some extreme damage uh, to this type of marking method and material. Uh, what happens is the UV rays from the sun will eventually cause a fading process to start. And once it fades enough, that barcode will no longer be readable. And mm -hmm. once that happens, now you're completely uh, in non-compliance. This whole process of Mill Standard 130, this should be a one and done process. A year from now, two years from now, you should never have to go back and put a new label uh, because the original label, quote unquote, wore out or faded. Uh, it's, that's why it's very important that you understand what those environmental conditions are. So and you're speaking, if I may, Dan, from a uh, end item deliverables perspective or even marking GFP where oftentimes you're marking it once and then the next step is eventual disposal of that item. Exactly. In, in any yeah. um, maintenance environments, the recreation of the UID is actually a fairly common practice where you have to put something through some kind of cleaning process that may destroy the barcode, in which case they need to re reproduce the exact same IUID because that is the number that represents the birth record of that item. Right. Very, very key point, and if, if that does have to take place, you want to be sure you know the exact data, the exact part number, and the exact serial number if a label does need to be created. Absolutely. Because yep. it is a permanent uh, UID to that asset. That number does not change. Yep. Good. Some so, of the other materials? Yeah, so uh, looking up to the other materials, you can uh, jump up here to metallized polyester. Uh, now we start to get into a little more durable environment. Uh, again, that is also a thermal transfer printing method. So again, uh, metal polyester, just like polyester, uh, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, if it's for some type of indoor environment, I, I would not use it uh, for an outdoor environment for the fading issue that we discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does have um, some additional applications such as low surface energy plastics, powder coated surfaces uh, that can also be applied. The next one, polyacrylic. Uh, this is a medium to high wear and tear item, probably the most popular material that's used for UID labels for two reasons. It has a high durability and it doesn't have the extreme cost factor when you get into uh, an aluminum plate. Uh, this marking method uh, is used with a laser. It's a laser etch process. So if you have some assets that are going to be outdoors, this is exactly the material that you want to use. With the laser etching process, the uh, chances of fading are essentially removed from the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the type of material where if you mark the asset and that asset exposed to the outdoors, you can rest easy that that mark will be readable a month from now, a year from now, five years from now. 
Uh, and as you can see in the applications, uh, rough industrialized, uh, excuse me, rough industrial environments, uh, small arms, uh, weapon systems, engines, types of items that are going to be exposed to the outdoors on a regular basis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the most durable material out there really is a photo etched aluminum. This is your absolute worst case scenario, the most ruggedized environmental conditions that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Aerospace, uh, vehicles, engines, heavy outside uses, things that are going to be exposed to harsh chemicals, uh, abrasions, solvents. Uh, photo etched aluminum, uh, basically that's um, a uh, image that is sealed within the anodic layer of the aluminum. It is completely sealed, uh, so there's no chance, obviously, of fading, and certainly uh, the chemicals, harsh abrasions, uh, are virtually a non-factor with this type of durability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One last point I want to make, uh, when you're trying to identify the environmental conditions, if you know that an asset is quote unquote going to be indoors, I would did a little further because I've had situations where customers have told me, yes, these assets, uh, they are going to be indoors, but it turns out they're test equipment mm -hmm. and they're going to be in a laboratory environment, could be exposed to extreme temperature or some type of harsh chemical or abrasion. Sure. While the asset may be indoors, uh, what it's going to be exposed to is a very ruggedized uh, environmental condition, so you'd have to at least bump up to, I would say, a polyacrylic or more than likely a photoanodized aluminum. 